Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, Admin Evangelist, and this is How I Solved It. Admins know that account and contact management can get messy in Salesforce, especially when contacts change accounts. To keep data clean, Stacy O'Leary created a flow access from a custom button that is easy for her end users to use and keep the org's data clean. She put some sprinkles on top of her solution with a little something extra using component visibility. Today, I'm with Stacey O'Leary. She is a Salesforce consultant with Quickly Consulting and is five times certified. Welcome to How I Solved It, Stacey. Thank you. I'm so excited and flattered to be here. So I like always hearing about everyone's journey because each is unique. So what is your Salesforce story? I am an accidental admin. I think like a lot of Salesforce admins are. I started my career working in childcare and I did that for a really long time. And eventually I got referred to work in customer service and tech and do just data entry for customer support. So that's how I got started with Salesforce was just doing bulk uploads of the data loader and that's it. And then eventually doing admin tasks to support the customer support team, which was really fun for me to learn sort of that end of it and get my feet wet with Salesforce. And then I just got hooked and I kept going from there and learning more and more. And so here I am today. Awesome. A lot of us get hooked in. <laughs> yeah, it's a kind of addictive. <laughs> so what do you enjoy most about this platform and why? So when I stopped working with with kids, I kind of worried moving into tech that I would lose that sort of like creativity uh, feeling in, in my career. And I really found that that's not the case at all. Uh, there's so much that you can customize in Salesforce and, and so much that you need to actually create. So it's something that I really enjoy and I really enjoy sort of making things. And I also enjoy designing and scoping and and that's all really challenging and fun. So in talking about that creative process of designing a solution and building automation, what advice do you have for a new admin in that regard? Like how do you come up with a solution and then go about building that new automation? Sure. Uh, well, I think a, a really important piece of advice for new admins is just because you can create something doesn't mean that you should. So we want to make sure that we're always doing really thorough scoping and thinking about the future and how this need is gonna change. You know, we don't wanna just create a field because ever someone asks for one. So that's, I think, really important for new admins to remember. It's really exciting to create new fields and new objects. and it's really fun to do that, but this scoping half is really important to think about what that need is going to be long term. All right, so share with us the business problem that you're trying to solve. Sure. Uh, what I found with a lot of my clients is that uh, what happens with their end customers is what happens with everyone is that people change jobs. And sometimes an AE or a sales rep will call a prospect on the phone and they'll say, oh, I, I don't work there anymore. I work somewhere else now. Mm -hmm. And that's a very normal thing that everyone, every industry has to deal with. And I found a lot of clients, a lot of Salesforce users dealing with that in very interesting ways, ranging from like deleting the contact, um, changing the account lookup, not changing anything, just changing the email address, um, so a lot of weird stuff happening, and I definitely came to my mind that there's got to be a better way to manage that process without losing data, like deleting wow. a contact, and without creating inaccurate data, which is someone whose account name doesn't match their email address or where they actually work. Right. So we're admins. We like seeing how things are built. So show us how you solved it. Sure. What we're going to look at is just a custom button on the contact page. And there's just a really simple piece of automation behind it here. So this is all we have for our users and it's going to take away a ton of clicks 
what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new contact and also sort of archive this old contact. So first thing we get uh, with this contact, let's say she's moved to XYZ Corp. Um, we're going we have our screen. We're going to put in the name of the new account. If we need to update her name, we can. That's here. But we definitely want her new email address. So we're going to put that here. And if we have her new title and her new, new phone number, we can enter that here. But in this example, they're not required fields. And this is it. This is all we're asking of the user to enter for the new record. And now we're at the last screen. So there's nothing else the user has to click on to do anything. All we want to do here is we want to look at our redirect to our new record. And we can see we're on the right account. Her name was moved. Her new email address is here. Her status has been set properly. And then if we go back to our old record, we can click Finish. And right away, we can see that this person doesn't work there anymore. And it's very obvious to the end user. And they didn't have to click anything. They didn't have to change this. They didn't have to update anything. We have our banner here, which lets them know what's going on. We also use the flow to update the status, update our do not call, and update our email opt out. So all of this happened, and our new contact was created with just that one screen that users entered information on. Yeah, I love how it's so obvious that the old contact is old. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that I think we sort of take for granted as admins because we look at data all the time. And so naturally when we look at records, we're checking things like status or email opt out, or that's natural for us. But with sales and with end users, they're going through a lot of contacts at the same time. They're working very quickly. Um, things are not obvious to end users that are often obvious to us as admins. So the easier we can make life for an end user, we should definitely do that. Great. Now, can you show us behind the scenes how you set that up? Yes, absolutely. So our flow is a very simple flow. So what we're looking at here is just a few different components. And I think for any admins that are trying to learn flow or get used to it coming off of Process Builder, this is actually a great flow for you to start with or to start getting comfortable with. So all we're doing here is we want to get our old contact. And this there's really not much to this one, except we're just getting the ID of the old contact because we do want to update the one that doesn't, the one that doesn't work there anymore, that contact record. And then we're also going to show our screen. So this is the screen where we are asking for information from the user. This was that screen where I typed in the new account. Now, what I like here about this one is we have directions right at the top. You can add what, whatever sort of directions you need. If you want to have more fields that are required or less fields that are required, anything that you want to change about this screen, you can, but this is sort of the one place where we want the user to interact. And remember, we don't want them clicking all over the place. We don't want them messing with the old one, manually updating the new one. This is the screen where we want to do everything. And then our next two components, those are our create and our update components. So our create record is where we're creating the new contact from everything that they just entered on that screen. So all we're doing is we're putting in the account ID, their new email address, uh, if they changed the name. We also have a couple hidden fields that we're defaulting here. So in this example, we are pulling the old lead source and applying that to the new contact. You can do whatever works for your org here. And then same thing for status, I'm using a default value here, but you can do whatever works for your org as well. And then in our update records, this is where we're going to sort of archive the old contact. 
So this is where we're using that ID from the old, the get contact um, component earlier. And all we're doing here is we're updating our do not call, our email opt out and our status. And that's the only three things we need to do on the old contact. And then finally, we have our screen, our sort of congratulations completion screen. So what we're doing here is we just have one display text. There's nothing the user needs to fill out. We're telling them our congratulations message, and then we're giving them a hyperlink to the new, uh, new contact that was just created. And that's it. That's all there is to this flow. Now, just creating the flow doesn't actually have to do anything. You have to add the button to the page and you also have to create the action for it. So what we'll do is we'll go take a look at that real quick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our contact object and we need a new action. Now I'm in incognito mode, so it opens this up in classic for me, but it looks exactly the same in lightning. So we're just gonna create our new action we're going to select the flow, give it a label that makes sense for your users. I like move to new company because it spells out exactly what we're doing. And then you're going to hit save. And then you need to add that also to your page layout. And depending on how your buttons and links and actions are, you might need to add it to your page layout in the lightning page, in the lightning uh, buttons, links and actions section, or actually add it to the record page itself. Now, there's one more thing to look at on our Lightning record page, and that's this banner here. And this is a really fun and easy thing that anyone can add uh, for, for your users. And it doesn't have to be for this purpose. You can use this feature for anything. But it's really just a, a filter-based rich text component, and that's all it is. So when we click on it, you can see that I've just typed in my message for my end user. And then on the bottom, our component visibility, we just have a filter that says anytime on this record when the status equals no longer at company, we show this component. And if the status is anything else, we don't show that component and we can see that this works because our new contact record doesn't show that as well. And that's it. That's all there is to it. I love how flexible component visibility is. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like all the time. That's the best. Every, I feel like every day I think of something new to use it for. Yeah. One thing I want to draw attention to real quick is back in your flow, how did you create that link to the contact record without hard coding it? So this is just a forward slash, and then will it open it up for me? Uh, a forward slash, and then the record ID of the new, um, the new record that we just created. And I actually have it in the blog post that will be with, uh, that you can check out. Um, so you can actually just copy and paste it directly because if you're using a the same kind of flow, it'll be the same name and everything. So super easy. You don't have to create anything special to go with it. And the best part is you don't have to change it when you migrate it from Sandbox to production. So the link will work no matter what org you're in. Awesome. Love that. Thank you, Stacy, for showing us the solution to keep our contacts clean and updated in Salesforce by using a flow to create the new contact record and associate that to the new account and also updating the prior contact record and updating that status and making it crystal clear that it's an old <laughs> contact using vis component visibility. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to share this feature. You just saw how Cece O'Leary created a simple screen flow that allows her users to keep contact and account data clean in their Salesforce org, and she used component visibility in App Builder to highlight important information regarding the record to the end user. You can always find videos like this at admin.salesforce.com and also by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Salesforce Admins, so you will never miss another episode of How I Solved It. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Awesome admin.